Lushu is one of the most interesting and mysterious characters in Kingdom Hearts. There is so much we don't know about his incredibly long life, but what we do know is fascinating. Generations ago, in ancient times, Lushu was chosen for a very important mission. It was as if he was handpicked by the Master of Masters to save all of reality by himself, while his fellow foretellers would have to commit unspeakable horrors on the battlefield. Lu Xu would have to sacrifice everything. He had to live forever, stealing one life after another, never truly being himself, hiding beneath someone else's face. He had to shed his body and his name to live as an immortal spy watching society grow and change, searching for the Dark Seeker and the Child of Destiny. He needed to watch over those chosen by fate. Lu Xu was just a kid when the Master of Masters chose him. It was an incredible honor to be able to read the Book of Prophecies, to be the only person other than the Master, to see the entirety of history. He was taught the darkest of magic. He even knew the Master's true plan. His job was simple, watch over the Keyblade No Name, Make sure that the person who wielded it was worthy, and to make sure that history was on track. His other goal was to transport, hide, and protect a locked box. No one could know what was inside. It needed to be hidden from the world until the perfect moment. Lu Xu's life was lonely. Throughout history, he would find people close to the most important people in history. Those who would have nothing more to give to the timeline. Important figures who had finished their fated choices and he would steal their bodies. It's not clear if this process would kill this person, or if he was keeping them trapped in their own body, or if he merged with them. But nevertheless, in order to live forever, he would destroy his own body and steal the life of another. It's not clear how many lives he had stolen, how many hearts were broken, or even how long he was the people that we've seen him become. But the story is always the same. Steal a body, find no name, insert himself within that person's circle, and wait for the chosen ones. He knew what the book said. He knew the broad strokes of history. But the little things always surprised him. At some point, he possessed the second Union leader brain. He wasn't him the entire time, but he became him at some point. He became the Keyblade student Braggy, and he became a mercenary named Bragg. For some reason, he always loved to use those letters in his name, like a jumble of certain letters. Maybe it made him feel better, maybe it was so that the Master could recognize him. But every time, he would eventually reveal the truth to someone. And usually, they would die soon after. It was an endless, isolated, cold, lonely existence. Living forever, watching history pass, day after day, waiting for the day he could finally finish his mission. The others had it easy. All they needed to do was fight a battle to get all these Keyblade-wielding kids to destroy one another. But he had to get to know these kids, become one of them, pretend to make friends, and eventually manipulate and even destroy them. He only did these things as a last resort if he had to, but he did this for generations. Finally, he had reached his final life, Bragg. He already knew Xehanort in his past life when they were kids when Xehanort was a kid and he was possessing a student. But then he had to switch bodies because his identity was burned. Now, he had Xehanort right where he wanted him. Xehanort didn't know who he was. Xehanort thought he was a foolish idiot who just wanted his Keyblade when he died. He helped trick Terra into embracing the darkness. He watched as Xehanort stole his body. And when Xehanort lost his memory, Lushu was there to nudge him down the right path. He was using him the entire time but he also kind of respected it. After studying the heart together, after making Ansem the Wise disappear, Xehanort revealed the truth. He was still in there. He still remembered. The memories were foggy at first, and Bragg thought Xehanort was faking it the whole time, but he knew who he was. He stabbed Bragg in the chest, and then himself. From then on, Bragg went by the name Zigbar. His heart was gone, but he was still himself. He met Roxas, who looked a lot like Ventus, the kid he met generations ago. He met him back when he was Brain, and he met him again in the future. The kid was so mad. But now, Roxas had a new body. He was part of Sora. He was so... interesting. So many people lurking just below the skin, just like him. But Lushu could see the real person underneath. 
He saw his own face behind these new eyes every time he switched bodies. So he understood that there's more to a person than just their vessel. He can see it. He can pick up on when someone's not entirely one person. He was beaten by Sora as fate intended, and he rejoined with Xehanort in the world that never was, letting him possess him and turn him into a nobody again so that he could gain his trust. So he had now died twice for Xehanort. But in the end, on that final day, when he was going to die a third time, he faked his death. He wasn't gonna give up his extra life. He had to have his heart ripped out twice already. But he took no name. He took the box and he summoned the others. It was time. He was ready. When they asked him what his mission was all this time, where he was for all these generations, what he's been doing as time passed, he said the most aware line in Kingdom Hearts. I hope you like long stories. Lushu's reveals are some of the best twists in Kingdom Hearts. At this point, every prequel game, everyone's looking for another B, R, A, I, G, and sometimes N, jumbled in some acronym. He's a fun character, and he's the perfect right-hand man, always lurking in the shadows so that he can take over the story. Personally, I kind of hope he ends up being the last boss of Kingdom Hearts. I wouldn't be surprised if the Master of Masters gets revealed one day, and then defeated or joins our hero, and then Lushu would appear and take over the story from then on. I wouldn't even be surprised if he was the Master of Masters, time traveling back to speak to his past self. But Lushu doesn't even need to be the Master of Masters. He's already the most interesting character in Kingdom Hearts. Anyway, I'm Aloni the Bard, and that's what I know about that guy. Thanks for listening. Bye. That was a good one. I love Lushu. He's one of my favorites. That's why I waited so long to talk about him. Because I had to explain all of Union Cross and Dark Road first. There's a lot of stuff just to explain who Lushu is. I think he's fascinating. And he's always like the most difficult boss for me personally to fight. I love him. And I love his catchphrase, as if. I wanted to put it in the script more, hide it in the script a couple of times. I did a few, but I didn't do that many. I wanted to fit more in. I'm changing the times I stream. I realized that maybe having no days off for 37 days straight was not a good idea. I thought I could handle it because I already did 300 days of streaming in a row before, but I've decided to, to pull back just because I have so many videos I make now. So I stream Saturday, Sunday, and Monday now. So come on by. I got a new show called Game Night on Sundays where I play different kinds of games like board games, card games, maybe even video games with all these imaginary friends I have. You might have seen them in the Truth About Dark Road video. Yeah, I think it's really fascinating to watch a person argue with themselves in real time. We did a really good like board game tournament arc. I'll probably do that again. He's fun. Anyway, on my other channel, I just filmed the longest scripted video I've ever written. Uh, I made a video about the hot new game Pal World and I wrote a ton of scripts for it. It was an emotional disaster. I feel like I've watched like 30 videos about it and I've played it for like 50 hours. But I talk about the story behind how it was made, or at least the rumors about that story. And I try to defend it why it's getting so much online hate. It's a new kind of video for me. I don't usually like to get people angry or like to get angry myself. Some people are really mean on the internet, but you should check it out. Anyway, I'm rambling, so I will talk to you later. See you Saturday or next Wednesday. Bye.